My name is Worley. I am the co-founder and CEO of Honest Dollar. Honest Dollar is a new software platform that is re-engineering retirement services. It feels pretty amazing to win release it. Uh, we had pretty low expectations going in. When we found out we were one of the finalists, we were incredibly excited. Uh, and there was a lot of good competition there, so we were actually a little surprised. We were kind of hoping maybe we'd come in second or third. Uh, winning it has been great because we won it on Friday the 13th, which was our launch day. So we literally went from having our funding come in that morning to winning release it to a launch party we did with Sir mix -a -Lot, and it was like kind of the most insane epic day ever. I have this history of trying to launch companies at South by Southwest. Um, it's such an incredible event. I've been coming to the event for years and years since Interactive was creative. And my last company, Chaotic Moon, was launched at South by Southwest. And it was so great because there's a density of people. There's a density of supporters. And so a lot of times when you're launching, you want to kind of do the idea in a vacuum and then you want to put it out. And that's a really big mistake. And so we kind of wanted to do the same thing I've done previous companies, which is take advantage of South by, not as a platform of press, but more as a platform of people that could give us feedback, introduce us to investors and other entrepreneurs. Maybe we're having, I mean, we anticipated that we'd have issues with fundraising. So I was gonna meet a bunch of my friends who have actually successfully fundraised at South by Southwest and say, well, come to the launch party and then I can mine you for information on how I should do fundraising. So we're re-engineering retirement and that's the first step in re-engineering the overall financial system, not just in the US, but globally. If you look at retirement, it's a market that came about sort of by mistake. So Ted Binna, who was a, a CPA in 1976, around that time, discovered Section 401, Subsection K, and he found some rich people, some ways to save more money. And an industry blossomed out of that, and we just feel that retirement is ready for a revitalization. People traditionally think of retirement as, well, I'll retire when I'm 65, and we disagree. We feel that setting that 65 age is really setting the customer life cycle of how long they'll be able to profit from those people who are trying to retire. We believe you should have a retirement income stream. So if you need $1,500 a month to retire and pay your bills, then if you could do that right now at 35, wouldn't you? Probably so. So we're taking a completely different view of the system and we're really focused right now on the small businesses that can't afford uh, the uh, administrative responsibility, they can't afford the fiduciary risk, they can't afford the cost to offer this to their employees. And these are the people that are the backbone of America, the, the waitress at the bar, the guy at the hair salon, so on and so forth, that really need to be able to have some sort of savings plan that will help them save for their future and also save for emergencies, things like medical and other things that come up along the way in our lives. So we started on November 21st of 2014, and my partner, Tadayoshi Yoshida, people call him Henry, uh, he and I really wanted to solve something in financial services. And, uh, you know, his uh, first generation Japanese American, his parents uh, came over here, he was, he was born here, and his parents kind of uh, didn't have the retirement savings and were a little bit taken advantage of by the system. So kind of, he has this history in his career of protecting people, protecting the businesses, really working to make sure that they're getting the best possible solutions they can. Even that, though, doesn't leave you with a lot of good solutions. If you look at it, there's 70 million working Americans that have no access to a retirement savings plan. A majority of those work at small businesses, and nobody wants to service that market. If you're a small business and you have $20 million, then you can go talk to a Schwab or a Fidelity or whoever, and they'll be more than happy to do that. Uh, if you don't, you go through a bunch of middlemen and brokers and so on and so forth, and you end up paying 2 to 4% uh, for these plans. Now, when I say you end up paying, your employees end up paying because it's hidden in soft dollar fees. So the business thinks they're doing a good thing and actually they're really disrupting the financial uh, future of their employees. So we thought, why not come out with a new system that works for small businesses the way everything else does? $10 per employee per month. We do all of the administration and the business can sign up in 30 to 90 seconds. The employees can sign up in about 10 to 30 seconds. So it's not disruptive to the business. There's no sitting in the cafeteria getting the spill, uh, which essentially we see as a prospecting of the employees, right? To see who has money, who's inherited stuff, where you can charge them more fees. Um, so we wanted to cut out all of that and just streamline it to its core, which is helping people save for their future. Entrepreneurs always fail to realize what startups are. They're always in one of two phases. They're struggling or they're out of business. And each of us as entrepreneurs have different struggles. That doesn't necessarily mean that a bigger challenge means a bigger struggle. Um, you know, when we started uh, my last company, Chaotic Moon, uh, it was a little bit of a struggle to get going. And by the end of the year, it was a, it was a huge success, but there was a lot of time and effort. Uh, this startup, uh, which is a much bigger problem, has literally just been almost on rails going to its destination. So it really varies from time to time. And my advice to entrepreneurs would be to remember three things. 
The first of which would be control versus influence. Entrepreneurs have a tendency to want to control everything in their environment, in their ecosystem as they're building a business because it seems like that's a good way to protect it. It's also the way to choke all of the life and innovation out of a company. It's much better to use influence both in your other partners, in your employees, in partner companies, so on and so forth. They also fail to realize the difference between reaction and response because one of those is voluntary and the other is not. And when you're an entrepreneur and you react to things, you can often cause yourself more pain and more work and more you know, turmoil than you intended. Um, there's no decision as an entrepreneur you can't sleep on, which is the third thing, for 48 to 72 hours. And I guarantee you, no matter how bad it looks with funding or the code or the product or the manufacturing, it will look completely different to you after 72 hours and you'll have a completely new, fresh perspective.